TG Geeks, episode 122, June 19th, 2017. Lightning, light cycles, and anniversaries. Hello, and welcome to another webcast from TGGeeks.com, where Ben and Keith, the two gay geeks, talk about all aspects of geekdom and nerdery. Sci-fi, comics, film, horror, genre, you name it, we talk about it. I'm Keith Lane. We're coming to you from TG Squared Studios in lovely surface uh, Phoenix, Arizona. And I'm Ben Raggington, also coming to you from... It's just hot. I mean, it, it's hot. It, it's just hot. Hot. It is hot. Phoenix, Arizona. Oh my hot, hot, God, hot. it's hot. I mean, we just came back from California where it was pretty toasty there, and I'm watching the temperature gauge in our car just skyrocket. Yeah, it's incredible. It's disgusting. Yeah, so we've got uh, a little bit of uh, an episode for you here. We're just going to talk about a few things, and who knows where we'll go from there. So let's get right to it. To all you comic book geeks out there, there's going to be another X-Men movie. I'm actually really, really, really happy about this because I love... An X-Men movie? An X-Men movie, yes. Next. Next Men movie. The next next men. The next men. Next men? Next men movie. Okay, okay. I've lost it. Um, I'm really happy about this because I love the fact that they've decided to go back in time. I mean, I love the classic cast with Patrick Stewart and Ian McKellen. But it's. I think what they've managed to do with uh, the younger cast when they've gone, done these flashbacks has been absolutely amazing. I've loved the last several X-Men films. And I'm really surprised at this because James McAvoy, who's really uh, kind of amped it up and become an amazing um, theater actor. Uh, I mean, despite what, what I think about the movie Split, which you, know, you and I both disliked, I, you know, the only thing that saved it is McAvoy's performance. Right. He was brilliant in that. I mean, the guy's an amazing actor. Michael Fassbender's another amazing actor. And yet McAvoy, who said he was, ne- he was done, has signed on to do another X-Men film. This one's going to be called, I believe it's about Dark Phoenix. So uh, oh, what we've got here is that Simon Kinberg is officially confirmed to direct Dark Phoenix for 20th Century Fox. He worked as writer slash producer on Last Stand, Eek. First Class, Days of Future Past. He also had a hand in Deadpool and Apocalypse. So he's really he really knows the Marvel universe in terms of what 20th Century Fox has done. So I'm very happy about that. If you want to know more about this story, check it out on our website. You can go to tggeeks.com. We'll have a link for this in the show notes. Uh, so that's that's pretty much it that I want to cover on that because um, I've, I've got other things I want to talk about. Um, other things? <clears throat> other things. Well, this one I, I kind of want to talk a little bit more about. Um, Arrow Video. We got this press release, and I'm not sure how the heck we got it. Hmm. Uh, Arrow Video is bringing Mario Bava's Kill Baby Kill to home video, DVD, Blu-ray. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, again, the article will be on our website. Uh, Mari Baba fans can scream with delight that the 1966 gothic horror film Kill Baby Kill, a movie that would resonate with an international horror filmmaking for years to come, is going to be seeing its release on September 11th. And the plot is this. In the early 20th century, pathologist Dr. Paul S.Y., played by Giacomo Rossi Stewart, who was in The Last Man on Earth, is summoned to a remote Carpathian village to perform an autopsy on a woman who died under mysterious circumstances. With the locals convinced they are being haunted by the spirit of a young girl who died years ago, can the steadfastly rational doctor find a logical explanation to the strange goings-on, or will his rational beliefs be destroyed by the dark secret that lies within the crumbling walls of the ancient Via Graps? Mm-hmm. So uh, this movie is, yeah, it's getting its big release. Uh, Kill Baby Kill arrived at what is referred to as the tail end of the golden age of Italian horror, and is regarded by many as Bava's masterpiece. Now, I would recommend people to check out the article, check out the press release that we did run, because there is a whole uh, slew, a list 
of the special edition contents. Oh, wow. But and, and I saw the trailer for this. This looks really good. I'm very excited to have it, but I wanted to have a little conversation. Now, I first learned about Mari Bava from you. Well, yeah, it, it was basically about the um, Italian horror and finding out that Hercules versus the vampires and Hercules in the underworld, mm -hmm. the, the, the film that it was based on. And that's kind of just what I was looking at Mario Bava films for. Mm -hmm. and haven't seen a whole lot of them, but, uh, you know, we saw the, the Hercules thing. And <laughs> oh, dear Lord. <laughs> but found out that, you know, Christopher Lee did a lot of uh, Mario Bava. There were a lot of people that did Mario Bava films, and he was the the master of Italian horror, shall we say. And that, it was kind of like spaghetti westerns, you know. Right. Now, I remember, and you're, you're going to have to correct me on my timeline here because I'm probably way off. Last year, not this last Comic-Con, but the one previous, we attended a uh, a panel on horror. You personally find it kind of dull. I rather enjoyed it. But it was interesting, yeah. I, the information that was given out was very interesting i just didn't like the delivery <laughs> right <laughs> because it was just deadpan it was very npr <laughs> uh and, but afterwards we were talking to the the panelists it was basically two people yeah. and uh in fact one of them she worked for blumhouse didn't she yeah uh, oh gosh I, I can't remember her name now it just it was in my brain because uh miguel was talking about her just recently ah i it just oh well but I, but I remember the conversation about Bava came up at that point. Now, had we did we know about Hercules versus the vampires at that time? I don't think we did. Yet you were familiar with Bava already at that time. Just uh, just slightly, just only because I've looked up the IMDb entries and and some other things. But that that was about it. Because you seem to you, not. You seem Real to familiar. have okay. I, only reason I wonder because I remember you said you know originally you didn't have much of an interest in in horror films themselves, but you, when you spoke about Baba, there was a lot of um, uh, love in your voice. Oh, just for, for uh, that filmmaker, just that Italian schlock. You know that that was what I was thinking about. Is is that particular? Uh, genre of films and the fact that they were so um, schlocky, uh, schlocky, <laughs> yeah. for lack of a better term, yeah, it, it was just one of those uh, oddball things. And, and to see some of that uh, horror that was taking place on the the screen, uh -huh. is there something about the cinematography that also appealed to you too? Yeah, just kind of the the interesting way that Mario Bava did his films it, they were so over the top and you know as far as crazy effects and just more schlock really mm -hmm. i mean that that's kind of really what it was all about are there i mean so we've seen one so far that i you know hercules versus the underworld uh any other baba films that you know of that you've had an interest in not at this time no yeah well here's a second one and everybody's really raving about it. And the trailer does look really good. I'm very excited about seeing it. Um, it and like I said, people, check it out. Uh, you can pre-order Kill Baby Kill from Arrow, Arrow Studios, um, uh, Arrow Video itself. We have the link for that. Or you can uh, uh, pre-order it from Amazon as well. Mm. So I think this is, this, I'm very excited about it. Uh the, the list of details looks great, and it's it's being restored uh, to 2K high definition. Mm. So I think it's going to be beautiful. Although, to be honest, I would love to see, and we talked about this the other day, I would love to see a remastered 35 millimeter print. Yeah, that would be great. I would love to see it because they're, they're, the tones are just so gorgeously rich in that. Yep. There is lots of things that you can do. Yeah. So now, moving on, we had the enormous pleasure of seeing Pixar's latest, and I would say probably, well, probably their greatest, we got to see Cars 3. Yes, we got to see it before it opened. Uh, got the press screening we last were actually week. actually in Los Angeles for Car... For the opening, yeah. opening night. <laughs> opening night. Yeah. For something else, but uh, we were um, 
got to see the Cars 3 before it opened, and I loved it. I thought it was a return, uh, at least to the Cars universe, uh, or, or Cars genre, shall we mm-hmm. say, where Cars 2 doesn't count. <laughs> Aha! Okay. <laughs> you know, I, I, so I, there's Cars, and then there's Cars, cars 3. <laughs> right. Now, I don't want to turn this into... Uh, now, I, I will point out, we have a, a re, uh, there's a review for this movie... That is on our on our website, tggeeks.com. We will have a link for that in our show notes. So if you want to know what I thought about Cars 3, and, and I do kind of refer to some of Keith's thoughts too here and there, you can read it there. But I uh, first, and without this turning into any kind of bash. No, I, I mean, Cars 2 was okay. It just, no, it's okay. But it just what, doesn't, you don't have to see it to see Cars 3. Okay. You know, that that's that kind of what I meant. All right. It, it's kind of in a different a different place, shall we say? It's kind of a a disconnected story in the Cars universe that features the Cars. It was an extended um, Mater, yeah, Mater story, yeah. Because that because after Cars and before Cars two, Mater was was always featured in little little Pixar shorts. He right. had a whole series of shorts which are terrific. Though though those shorts were fantastic. Uh, but as uh, for a feature length film, Mater was a little bit too much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that that's kind of a loss for me. But now we are back to Cars three, and this is really lightning again. Yep. And it it's back to that the basic characters that start the film, and then he goes off to do something else, and we are introduced to a whole new set of characters uh, that in the racing world, shall mm-hmm. we say, and without giving away anything, you know, a spoiler, uh, there's some really heartfelt moments and some really good um, touching mm-hmm. scenes in the film. One that kind of made me uh, tear up a little bit, but uh, featuring a, a, a specific character. <laughs> well, I we, we can go ahead and say who that is, I think, because I did make reference to it in the review. Yeah, well, and, and it, it, you already know that Doc Hudson is no longer in the universe. Right. We know that from Cars 2. From Cars 2. And this, uh, he kind of features a little bit in Cars 3. So it's kind of like uh, a nice tribute to Doc Hudson and and Paul Newman. Now, we did learn some years ago from a friend of ours who who has a lot of good Disney connections. Paul Newman had recorded a lot of dialogue for the movie, uh, when when he was recording for Cars, the first Cars film, he recorded a lot of extra material that was never used. Right. And the original idea when they were first starting to throw out the idea of Cars 2, when it was really, when that movie was, story-wise, was very much in its infancy. Right. The idea originally was to then use that extra dialogue, and then because th- there was just a lot of really creative... Um, uh, disconnecting disconnections that took place during the making of Cars Two, and it's it's no one's fault. And, you know, just bad things happen at that time. Yeah. And then so Paul Doc, Newman had to go up and, and die. Yeah, you know, die. I know. <laughs> so what ended up happening is uh, the whole Doc Hudson story kind of got shelved, and then they brought a lot of it back. They brought it back for this th- this film, yeah. and it's it's such a beautiful tribute. So yes, the Doc Hudson stuff really got to me in, in a very very big way, and. It's like every time he showed up, I mean, I just had this stupid, stupid grin on my face and just tears were coming out of my eyes. It was so, yeah. so beautiful, so well handled. Uh, so, okay, so yeah, the dog cuts and stuff is great. What were some of the other things about this movie or maybe about Lightning's story that uh, that, that you thought made this movie special? I, I thought that it, it's another one of those moments where Lightning has a... Uh, an aha moment and he's become a um a jerk again mm. if you will <laughs> you know where in the first film he really was clueless and in his own world and he has the aha moment of you know being in radiator springs and what it's all about and then he's so wrapped up in winning and being at the top of the game that he forgets who he really is and where he came from and how he got his start and then has another aha moment and then that it's really touching what happens the whole idea of legacy yeah exactly yeah uh i i cannot recommend this movie more 
Yeah, you should go see it. I, I really do, in fact, uh, after the film was done, um, spoke to Lee Massey, who is with uh, Finger Paint. Uh, she's a person I usually talk to whenever I'm offering a review. If she's there, I, I always like to go to her. And unfortunately, <laughs> every time I've had to go to her, it's always been a movie that I've been at best kind of eh, okay with. Yeah. Uh, or at worst, like, oh, I really think this is a, a dog. And this is the first time I was actually able to go up to her and say, I loved this movie. And she was so thrilled that I really loved it. In fact, she asked me if I was a NASCAR fan. Oh. Uh, and I said, no, no, I'm not. But I love classic cars. And, right. and that's the other thing this movie touches on. There's some, some really good classic car moments. Yeah, there are. So really, it's kind of cool. I can't recommend it enough. People, please go see it. Uh, it, it's it's such a joy. The only thing that would have made it better is that they could have gotten Michael Keaton back to play yeah. Chick Hicks. Yeah, but that, you know, but aside from he that, he only had a few lines. Anyway. He only had a few lines. But aside from that, I mean, there was some fantastic, fantastic people. I love Army Hammer. Yes. Uh, as as a uh, was it Smokehouse Jackson? I think is his name. Uh, Jackson yeah. is 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 the 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 name that he has. But I think his nickname is Smokehouse. But I I can't remember at the moment. But he's fantastic. I mean, I love the movie. You, I think you'll all enjoy it. So, yeah, go check out. And if you want to know, again, if you want to know what we think, just check out the link in our show notes for this episode to see our review for Cars 3. Go see it. I'm Joe Ahern, writer and director of the new film B&B, and you're listening to The Two Gay Geeks. <laughs> And we have our birthdays, as always. And these are a few selected birthdays and events for June 19th through June 25th, 2017. June 19th, Zoe Saldana, Ann Wilson. Of Heart. Of Heart. And Pat Buttram, Mr. Haney. Mr. Haney. As well as among other oh, things. Oh, my word. I mean, I mean was, his voice is so identifiable. Yeah, he was bullet number three in uh, Roger Rabbit. Roger Rabbit. Or I, remember him, I, uh, I, remember. I remember him in, uh, I think it's the Aristocats. Yeah. As his old hound dog. Yeah. He he had a a voice that, you know, and that, that drawl that he used. Was, well, that's why I think when uh, it was decided that uh, when Robert Zemeckis wanted to do Back to the Future 3, set in the Old West, he had to get... Uh, Pat Buttram back because right. he just had that identifiable voice that was just so suited that that was part of the old Western films. Exactly. So Pat Buttram, June 20th, Martin Landau, Errol Flynn, and Murray, and so, oh, who are the, who, who it's uh, the third anniversary of T us, TG Geeks. Oh my word. June 20th. Uh, the two gay geeks came into existence June 20th, 2014. Wow. Three years. Amazing. Uh, how many episodes? We're 122 episodes 120, This is the 100, 122nd episode now. Yeah. yeah. So that's uh, quite a, a feat. Yes. June 21st, Chris Pratt, Prince William, and Jane Russell. And to people who don't know who Jane Russell is? She wore the stainless steel stainless bra. Stainless steel bra. By Howard Hughes. That's right. In The Outlaw. A real campy film, one of Howard Hughes's films. And if I'm not mistaken, she became like the model for all sorts you know, for for bras like like the crossover bra, all kinds of different. I mean, yeah, she yeah. she was like the person that they would use for commercials. I remember those very well as a child. Yes, June twenty second, Meryl Streep and Cindy Lauper. June twenty third, Joss Whedon, Bob Fosse, Alan Turing, who was the computer genius that uh, cracked the Enigma yes. code, and also Johannes Gutenberg, born in 1400 on June 23rd. Uh, of the Gutenberg Bible? Of the Gutenberg Bibles. Aha. Uh -huh. yes. Okay, so, okay, a little bit of history for, for us who don't know. Tell, what are the Gutenberg Bibles? Yes, the Gutenberg Bibles. What about them? What about them? What about them? Thank you. You're not helping. <laughs> Well, it was in Doctor Who. That's yes, all we know. Yes, in one was, of our favorite episodes. Yeah, was, I just wondered if there were, maybe there was some <laughs> actual historical significance to it. Well, it was one, uh, one of the first. It was the first printed Bible. Ah, ever. Uh, because Johannes Gutenberg and the the printing press. He was the inventor of the movable type I printing see. press. Okay, very good then. 
So that's what was so fascinating about the Gutenberg Bibles, and that's why they were so precious, and that's why Count Scarlioni wanted to sell another one. Discreetly. Discreetly. But, sir, all of these antiquities on the market. How do you... A, a Gutenberg Bible discreetly? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, just do it anyway. <laughs> yes, uh, City of Death, Doctor Who episode. Probably one of our favorites yeah. ever. Yep. June 24th, Mick Fleetwood and Jeff Beck. June 25th, Sidney Lumet. Wow. George Orwell, Carly Simon, June Lockhart, and Dillo. Dillo. Dillo in Berlin. Thelonious Sweetleaf. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Dillo. And happy birthday to all of the rest. And that's it for the birthdays this time. Technorama, the podcast for geeks, because geeks are better than cool. You don't hear someone say, get away from me, you cool person. Who's going to have their 65-inch home theater system installed by the cool squad? Not me, that's for sure. How much cool cred do you have? Not enough to care about. Think you'll find any canned unicorn meat at thinkcool.com? It's just a part domain name. They don't even have roadkill in a paper cup. That's why you need to start listening to Technorama, because that's what geeks do. Go to chuckchat.com and listen to Technorama before you turn cool. Go give a listen to our friends Chuck and Craig over at Technorama. And yeah, we keep playing Technorama a lot because... We don't have any other bumpers for any podcasts. Guys. If you have a podcast or you want to have us feature, we try to feature a podcast every week, a different podcast every week. Uh, get in touch with us on the website, on the contact page, and uh, let us know you have a podcast. No kidding. We'd be happy to share. Yeah, exactly. And now, it's time for a little listener feedback or as i used to think when, when i was a kid it was feed bag feed bag <laughs> like a horse feed like, bag. Like, yeah <laughs> okay <laughs> so. well starting off and going way back in time to episode 51 episode 51 yes now for people who don't remember what episode 51 was uh, this is where we interviewed a couple of independent filmmakers from the UK about an upcoming horror short called Conditioning. Okay, so be that as it may, but yes, it was a horror short that we were interviewing the filmmakers for. And we got a comment from the twins. And what happened is they've, uh, they went to another YouTube uh, or another yeah, YouTube channel and uh, recommended us. And the comment that they left us personally was, we've mentioned your channel as possibly of interest to horror genre fans, occasional reviews of movies and horror genre, in comments at this one particular episode, 71 Creepy YouTube Channels. Oh, cool. So thank you for spreading the love, yes, twins. We love it. Thank yes, you very much. That, that makes us so unbelievably happy. Now, speaking of bad horror films, The Mummy. And going back to what we talked about last week at Universal's mediocre attempt at launching Dark Universe, we got a comment from Hamish Downey, and he says, uh, doesn't Tom Cruise always play an arrogant jerk in his movies? No, most of the time. Yeah, but you know, he in those other movies, he's kind of likable. He's kind of roguish, and not this one. He's kind of dickish, <laughs> yeah. to be really honest. And something else, you know, and I, I was just going through my gallery, and I'm, I'm moving some files over, and I found... Uh, some artwork that we used when we first advertised that Universal was doing The Mummy with Tom Cruise, and they were really trying to emphasize the horror aspect of it in the artwork as right. part of their press release. And again, I'm like, well, wow, guys, you really missed the boat. Yeah, and interesting. We we just watched the um, uh, episode of Graham Norton last night that had Tom Cruise on it, and he actually showed a picture, or they showed a picture on their of the dark universe characters you know it's going to be frankenstein right. invisible man and and all of this and i i i just 
have some trepidation in their dark universe uh, trying to well the Frankenstein one that, yeah so. the Frankenstein one could be interesting and I cannot remember the name of the actor but he was the antagonist in the latest Pirates film yeah the dead pirate uh, he's going to be playing Frankenstein so I think that could be good the one that has me worried is the Invisible Man that'll be played by Johnny Depp yeah. So I'm knows? very worried about that. And Tom Cruise's character will be the one who will tie it all together. Right. Uh, so I don't quite know what to think. I'm not all that happy with it. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway, uh, moving right along to uh, last week, we talked about the passing of Adam West. He was TV's Batman. Got a couple of comments. First one from uh, Carol Chernich, your cousin. She says, he will be missed. And yes, he will. And then got a comment from... Uh, your co-worker. Dottie Crone. Yes, yeah, she writes, I had the biggest crush on him, rest in peace. Um, a lot of people did. And again, going back to the Comic-Con appearance, he looked so vital. Oh, I'm, uh, yeah. I mean, just, he, he was just, he, he really, I mean, at that age, he still kind of had some sex appeal going for him. Yeah. He was amazing. Yeah. So it was, and it was a, a really good panel. I mean, they we talked about it last time that it was... Uh, Burt Ward, Adam West, and uh, Julie Newmar. Julie Newmar, and it was a great panel. They really, the chemistry is great. You know, it was it was just a lot of fun. Yeah, uh, it, it was great to see that they that they really are such close friends. And then, lastly, we have a comment regarding episode one twenty one, and mm-hmm. we had read a comment from somebody named Alicia CCTX. She posted it on her YouTube channel. And uh, she writes back in regards to our last episode, E, that was awesome to hear my comment in your podcast. I'm really enjoying this podcast. Great to know y'all read the comments. I'll continue tuning in. Also inspired me to see Wonder Woman. Yay. Uh, Glad. I'm I'm, glad to know what you think of Wonder Woman. Yeah, Alicia, actually, I would like to know very much what you think about uh, Wonder Woman. It's just nice to get uh, some other people's takes. And again, there are no wrong opinions. No, no. We were, we were having a discussion, actually, uh, and we'll talk about this a little bit more. Uh, you were having a discussion Friday night with uh, Kenny Rotter about... Of Dumbles he, and Dragons. Yeah, he doesn't really like the Wonder Woman film. But no. He, you know, he appreciates it, but, you know, everybody's got their own opinion, and we like a lot of stuff that people don't, and people like stuff... That we know, don't. That we don't, and people like stuff that... That nobody likes. <laughs> that, that we don't. But I keep saying the same thing. I'm trying to say something else. <laughs> well, there's, there's not very many uh, options there. Yeah. I mean, there's only two possibilities. There, well, there's a lot of things that people like that we don't. Right. And people, you know, a lot of things that people don't like that we do like. Exactly. You know? And it, it's amazing how much of that, some of it is like, wow, how could you not? like that yeah you know, uh, i remember hand films yeah i remember really having like. yeah i remember having some really intense conversations with somebody that used to be associated with slice regarding man of steel how she thought man of steel was like the best superhero movie ever made and and i just shook my head and said no <laughs> no nope. I, I i cannot subs- i cannot support that idea yep so we want to hear from you, our listeners. If you have a comment or you want to comment on an episode, on an article we've read or published or anything, anything on our Facebook page that we have to say, let us know. We're more than happy to receive your feedback and we'll give you a shout out on an episode. And you can always comment on our Facebook page. You can comment at uh, tggeeks.com. You can comment on our YouTube episodes, and every article and every episode, we have a comment section at the bottom of the page. So feel free to leave us a comment. We'll be glad to uh, talk about it on air. Or if you want to leave us uh, some feedback with your voice, you That'd be can nice. do that. And we'll play it on air. It's 469-TG-GEEKS. That is our listener line, 469-844-3357. Hi, I'm Hamish Downey. I'm writer-director of Silence and American Piano from Japan, former drag queen, and you're listening to The Two Gay Geeks. No. That's the wrong button there. Oh, well. <laughs> uh, lots of button, button, button.
Lots buttons. of buttons. Button. Who's got the button? Well, you do. <laughs> yeah, a bunch. Too many buttons. Too many buttons. <laughs> yeah. Now, you made reference to, uh, actually, we both did, uh, to a little trip we took down to Los Angeles. Yes. And uh, what did we get Specifically to Specifically for Tron. Tron and 70 millimeter. 70 millimeter. The original Tron, 1982, was it? Yeah. yeah. 1982 in 70 millimeter. And one of the things that was interesting about Tron is that, uh, and this was at the G Egyptian theater, and they're doing a bunch of films, of, of classic films, that were shown originally all over the, the U.S. in 35 millimeter, and they blew them, they up, blew them to up to 70 millimeter. Right. But the thing about Tron is it was filmed in 70 millimeter and was intended to be shown at 70 millimeter. But there's not a lot of theaters that, that show 70. Not many that, were, no, because yeah, at this time at the multiplex time, yeah. was really coming into its heyday yeah. and, and still is. So whenever that happened, the 70 millimeter screens kind of went away in favor of 35 millimeter just so you could fit more theaters. Yeah, and this, it was amazing. There was, uh, at the beginning, and, and this was an actual print, Yes, so they a had 35 a, millimeter print. Or a 70 millimeter. A 70 print. millimeter print. Yeah, they had to stitch it together the whole nine yards, and there at the very beginning there was like, oh dear, there's a so boatload many of artifacts. artifacts, and then all of a sudden it, it clean, kind of cleared it cleans up, up, and it was incredible. Noticed a bunch of little things that tiny I tiny details seen that in, just you just don't years. see. Yeah, on the small screen, it was great to see Tron on the big screen in 70 millimeter and it was just it was fabulous so that was at the egyptian theater they're doing a bunch of other film uh films uh we missed 2001 which was which back i December. would have oh loved to have God, seen God, because we knew that, that was done in 70 millimeter yep. i would have died for that one because yeah. i've only seen it in 35 yeah and we had uh, a bunch of friends that joined us we had mike and, and della cohen and Scott and Buffy Lindner and uh, Kenny Rotter. Kenny Rotter of Dundles and, and Dragons. And Jonathan Lat, Jonathan Latt. Jonathan Latt and, and Rob Palmer. Our friend Rob Palmer, filmmaker. And he had some interesting news He had some good news, news which we'll share, we'll share later. We can't, can't talk about it now, it right but now. boy, we're, we can't wait for when we finally get the go-ahead exactly. to start talking so. about it. So that's, that's good, some good stuff there. Yeah. Uh, but back to the Tron. You know, one moment that really kind of made me nervous. I mean, it opens up. And I thought, oh, but this this does look a little does look a little blown up. I, I kind of got a little edgy. Didn't looked a, looked a little fuzzy. Some of the resolution was not there. But then there was. We finally take this one. We're inside Flynn's bedroom, basically. Right. And uh, our, our 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 three musketeers, for lack of a better term, they're all there. Laura, uh, Bruce Bachner's character, whose name um, just went out of my head. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's not there anymore. And as soon as you said that, it went out of my brain. So, right, Alan, Alan, there we go. Alan won. Yeah, Alan won, and uh, and and of course Flynn. And at that point, it was the resolution was so crisp, and the tones just. Uh, I I mean, and I, we've seen this movie a dozen, dozens, dozens of times. I mean, we have it on Blu-ray. Yeah. So we've seen it countless times, and yet nothing compared to. The warmth of those tones, seeing it in 70 millimeter like exactly. that. Exactly. Oh, was, my word. It was just, it was wonderful. And the interesting thing, the Egyptian theater is a beautiful theater. Yes, it is. To begin with. And it it's a classic theater and, you know, it big screen. And it's kind of an intimate little space. It's uh, what'd you say? Doesn't seat that many people. A couple hundred people. About. Yeah. I mean, it's a it's a smaller theater, but it is a great for art house stuff like this. And I, they've and they've know, used and, to have some big Hollywood premieres there yeah. way back in the day. Yeah. But uh, the Egyptian is is a great theater, and they do a lot of these types of little film festival things of different classic films, uh, and it's. Amazing. Well, now I know why Mike and Della go there so often. Yeah. I mean, there's some really beautiful films there. And, and I, I tell you, if we lived there, oh my God, we, we would be living th in the theater exactly. pretty much. And it was amazing, too, in the audience. Uh, there were apparently some people in the business because you 
got to hear several uh, applause for different people. Lots of had, applause, actually, for the very things different... to do with the the film. Yeah, every know, time their so... name popped up uh, on the credits, I mean, there was all this applause that came out. And it, I admit, some of them were probably just you know diehard fans of the film. Yeah, but I but... think there are some people that are in the industry who really appreciated. Uh, everything that uh, exactly. that these people had done for this film. Exactly. Well, and the, for the history of film, too. Right. And uh, it's too bad that uh, there's not a, a theater here in Phoenix that not necessarily does 70 millimeter prints, but does 35 millimeter for, you know, of classic films, because we, we were talking about that on the way back from L.A. Yester or, yeah, yesterday, and that... It's a shame that some people have not seen certain films on the big screen mm -hmm. because you miss something. I mean, you can have the biggest screen, what, 60, 70 inches now, but that's nothing compared to seeing, you know, on the big screen. In a theater. In a theater and with a 35 millimeter with a print, print. A film print. Because yeah. we, we compared this to seeing Forbidden Planet on the big screen, but what we saw was a digital projection. Right. They they had a DVD of it. And and it's nice to see digital projection on a big screen, but there's nothing like seeing actual film right. or an actual print on the big screen. And, and I and I, I remember wish that there was a theater that did that. Yeah, I remember when we attended the, Yeah, yeah. When, when we saw the first went to attended the very first Horrible Imagining uh festivals right. and Miguel was just so completely geeking out over the fact that he managed to get a 35 millimeter print of cemetery man yeah and the, and there was another one too and i can't remember what the film was uh, another 35 millimeter print uh, that they showed so it was um it's there is something to be said about yeah. seeing film there there's a warmth to it yeah that you just don't you uh you well, don't in the get. size of the the uh, projection right. you know, on the screen too is is makes a huge difference. It does, but seeing Tron in seventy millimeter was so beautiful, and I dare say, I mean, obviously we can't go back for all the big the big uh, shows. I mean, like last night they were showing the thing, right? Which I would have loved to have seen again. John Carpenter's the thing yep. with Kurt Russell. That would have been a great joy, but you know, we had to come back. Uh, and we can't go back to every single one of these, but no. I think we need to kind of keep our eyes open exactly. for the ones that for really ones. speak to us. Yeah. And try to make it over as whenever the, whenever as the opportunity allows. Yeah, yeah, because it's really great. Absolutely. Yeah. So we have uh, something that uh, kind of fell in our lap this week, and a friend of ours that we met at the Jack Kirby uh, celebration last year, Tommy Cannon. He has uh, an event coming up, and this is celebrating independent creators. You know, we've always talked about independent creators and supporting them. And now is uh, a chance that we had to do that and a chance for you, too. On Sunday, July 9th at 630 at the Torch Theater in Phoenix, uh, Tommy's going to be hosting Tommy's Motion Comics Bonanza. It's an event celebrating the emerging art form of motion comics. It's $5, family-friendly, and he's got a GoFundMe account. And that GoFundMe account is to kind of help some of these independent creators that are doing motion comics and kind of get them, you know, a little exposure and to pay for some of the, the rent, et cetera, on that type of uh, event and venue. So um, it's, you can get a, an original font that he created and a, his little cartoon that he does is Fred the Mustard Packet. Check mm -hmm. it out. Fred the Mustard Packet on uh, just, do, go to Google and type in Fred the Mustard Packet, and it will take you to his comic. Mustard book. as in the condiment. Yes, mustard. Yes, so go do that. And uh, we'll have a, a link to his GoFundMe account, and if you think about it, you know, go and give him a couple bucks, and you can be part of that independent comics creation so and we'll have the link for that in the show notes too exactly uh as well as if you want i think um if you want to follow him i believe he is what at tomo sobo az is that it yeah t-o-m-o-c-o-b-o-a-z on twitter so check it out and i think there's a fred the muster packet on uh facebook you can 
Yeah, I think you've seen it. Th- I think that's where you've seen it too. So Tommy Cannon, he's uh, one of our new friends. And yes, we'll be supporting him in this venture that he has. And we have a few follow-up items, as always. Thank you to whoever it was that invited or invited, invited yes. us to the Parsec In, yeah. Awards. <laughs> yeah, and nominated us for a Parsec Award. We have submitted our um, sub- submission. Our um, submitted our submission. <laughs> yeah. What am I trying to say? Our um, it's an early morning. Segments. We're still tired. Yeah, little segments uh, to the Parsec Awards, and we thank you for nominating us. Thank I feel so pretty good about this much. one. Yeah, I do too. And check out our calendar on the website if you have a birthday or an event or a con or film festival or whatnot. Like Tommy's event, I put that out there on the calendar. Let us know. Send us a note, and we'll be glad to put it on the calendar. And as we have just talked about, we're huge supporters of independent creators, whether it's filmmakers or comic books or writers or whatever. Clothiers. Clothiers. Check it out. If they have a GoFundMe, uh, a GoFundMe account or a crowdfunding campaign, Indiegogo, Kickstarter, whatever, check them out. And usually you can get in for very little, um, you know, sometimes as little as a dollar, sometimes five bucks, sometimes it's more. You never know. It depends on what kind of uh, crowdfunding campaign they are uh-huh. running. And you could be a part of something big. Phoenix Comic Con Fan Fest returns to Phoenix on November 11th and 12th, 2017, and there is more info to come as soon as we as soon as we know it, anything. We will let you know. And Opera Con by Arizona Opera, October 21st, before Hercules versus the Vampires. That's going to be a fun day. I'm so excited it's about it already. Be really exciting. Check out uh, Arizona Opera at azopera.org. Special shout out to Doctor Who Talking Who on Twitter because they published the Doctor Who fan cast guide, which also also shares uh, some of the articles that we run during the week. You can find the fan cast guide by looking up Doctor Who Talking Who on Twitter. Their handle is at Talking Who. Also, we have good friend Arkel, Brian Weber. He on Twitter is known as the Nazi Punching Scald, and he publishes the Arkel Times Post Dispatch News that also shares our some of our articles and you can find him by going to Twitter. He is at Arkel, A R K L E. And he also wants you to check out his incorrect Star Trek Voyager quotes. We've read some in the past. He has those on Twitter and you will also find on Tumblr. That, on Tumblr, not Twitter, on Tumblr, thank you. And he also we will also run that link on uh, the show notes for this episode. Also, Sci Fi Obsession, thank you very much. They are on Facebook, and you can find them by going to facebook.com slash S-C-I-F-I-O-B. They also republish our stories as well. Yes, and thank you to The Looky Show for always commenting on our episodes and giving us some great love on Twitter. You can find them on Twitter at Looky Show, and check out their YouTube channel, Looky Show. They do old movie reviews and uh, not just old movies, but all kinds of different movies. It's and a fun rabbit hole a, to go down. Yeah, they've got lots of little things in there, and they, it's a very unique way of doing the reviews. Yes. So check out Lucky Show on YouTube. Special shout-out to the Facebook group, The Gay Geek. They are awesome in the content that they uh, publish. They have fantastic people there. It's a wonderful environment. It's a very friendly and accepting environment, so... You know, they they kind of expect everybody to be really cool. There, there's there's no judgment. Everybody is nice. The content there is fantastic, and their moderator Jeremiah Reeves uh, opened up the door for us to share our episodes there. So thank you, Jeremiah. If you want to find out more about the, the Gay Geek, just go to Facebook.com/groups/TheGayGeek. And thank you, Jeremiah. And we want to remind you to occasionally click on our Amazon ads. We have widgets on the right-hand side and at the bottom of every article that we publish. It doesn't cost anything, and you don't have to buy anything. But if you do choose to buy something, use one of our search ads, and we'll get a little bit of a kickback. So so thank you very much. We want to tell you that we're going to be in several places. Come We're we're putting a number of appearances in, aren't we? Yeah. We're getting busy. Come see us and say hi. We're going to be at WesterCon on Saturday, July 1st. 
and that will be we'll be wandering around hopefully during the day and then in the evening we're going to be doing the Jeannie Koch's Evening Erotica. Oh, boy. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. We'll also be at San Diego Comic-Con on July 20th through the 24th, and we're going to be on a panel on July 20th at 1.30 over at the library. So come check us out and uh, say hi. We'll also be at Horrible Imaginings Film Festival on Saturday, September 9th, and at Phoenix Comic-Con Fan Fest November 11th and 12th. So... Feel wow. free to come by and say hi. That's going to be, you know, starting next month, that is going to be just busy, busy, busy. Busy, busy. And lastly, but not leastly, please rate us on iTunes. It, we would appreciate it. Very much. And up next time, who knows what we're going to have. Uh, we'll have something for you, as we always Don't we do. always? So check us out next week. Okay, that should do it for this episode of TG Geeks Webcast. Be sure to check out the article for this webcast episode. We're going to have several links on the page. And remember, you can comment on our Facebook page or our website, tggeeks.com, or you can leave us a voicemail at 469-TG-Geeks. That is 469-844-3357. From TG Squared Studios, I'm Keith Lane. Thanks for listening. I bid you peace. Cheers. <laughs>